All right. Section 5.5 is the last section we're going to cover. It's on page 389. talks about the average value of a function. Now, the average is very useful to figure out the total. I'll give you some examples. So, if this is f of x, if I was spending based on this curve, if you can tell me what the average is and tell me the length of time, I can tell you the total. So if you were to tell me, I drove for an average, an, on an average of 60 miles per hour for two hours, I wouldn't figure out by the average how fast you are traveling every second of the trip. But if you are traveling for two hours on an average of 60 miles per hour, I know that you covered a total of 120 miles. I'll take the total distance. I'll take the total time times the distance, and that tells me pretty much the rate. Oh my god, I'm getting everything wrong. So, if I want to figure out the total distance, I will take the rate and multiply it by the time. If you tell me that you went on a trip, right, and you don't remember how much you spent, but you know that on average you were spending $50 a day. And you were there for five days I know that total amount that you spend would be $50 per day times five days which would be $250 so if I can figure out the average of how much you are spending and the length of time that you spend or the average of your speed times the time I could figure out the total without even using calculus. So if I want to know what the average is, take the total and divide it by the length of the interval. And there it is. If you tell me you spend a total of $250 in five days, if I want to know, know on average how much you spend per day, I'll take the total divided by the length. It looks a lot nicer than you writing it this way, but that's the same thing. Right? So if f is continuous on the interval from a to b, then there is a number in c such that the average in c is the total divided by the length of the interval. If I know that this is where the average happened, I take this height, multiply it by the length, it creates a rectangle, and this will equal the area under this curve. Oops. So the integral will pretty much accumulate everything that you need, and it will figure out all the variations and so on and so forth. In the beginning, we're just going to go by that. So this is a function. This is on page 398. It says y equal radical x 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. So we know here, if this is spending, you start at 0. And in one hour, you're spending a dollar. 2, you spent some between 1 and 2, between 1 and 2. And we know at 4, you spent $2. If I want to know the total amount that you spent, pretty much this amount. Or, if you have a hard time seeing that color, that amount. Well, guess what? If you tell me on average how much you spend, I multiply that by 4, that should give me what that area is. But finding the average in this case is not that simple. Well, guess what? If I want to find the average, I'll say that is the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of x dx that's going to give me the total of that divided by the length that will give me the average so in this case I would say that's 1 over 4 times add 1 to the power divide by that that is 1 over 6 times the square root of 4 is 2 cubed, that's 8 minus 0. So that is, the average is 4 thirds. 
if I go up, remember this is 2, if I go up to 1 and 1 third, and observe how this plays, if I go to a height of 1 and 1 third, and multiply it by this length, this area will match the shaded area. Extremely useful. Now, if I want, and this is coming up, I could say, you know what? Where does the average happen? Isn't that y equal? Can't I say, you know what? Where would, so I'm done with the problem, but this is coming up. Where does the square root of x equal 4 thirds? Isn't that when x equal 16 over 9? And 16 over 9 is actually 1 and 7 over 9. So I could figure out that that happens roughly at 1 and 7 over 9. And that's pretty much what you need to add to this. What is the height and where does it happen? Number 2. The graph is a bit awkward. Uh, this has an asymptote at x equal negative 1, a negative cube root of 1. But I'm only worried about negative 1. At 0, it is 0. Uh, vertical asymptotes of x equal positive, those are positive, something like this, but I only want to run from 1, and the left looks like, yeah, it's always positive. So the right looks something like this, and I'm only interested from negative 1 to 1. So I'm only interested in this region. Okay, well, how does that work? I would really try and figure out the average. That is 1 over 1 minus a negative 1, the integral from negative 1 to 1, of x squared over x cubed plus 3 squared dx. And if I let u equal x cubed plus 3, I don't like that, plus 3, let me make it nicer. du is 3x squared dx over 3. This will be 1 half, and this is going to be and this is 1 over u squared du, so that's u to the negative 2. Add 1 to the power, divide by that. That is 1 over 6 times u to the negative 1 over negative 1, evaluated from negative 1 to 1. That is negative 1 over 6 times 1 over x cubed plus 3. Uh, I should have changed the limits of the integral. Actually, a good practice. Something that you should have practiced. I've been mentioning that. Let's do that. If I let u equal negative 1, what would u equal? So I don't need to go back to x. That's the beauty of this. Something you should really get out of the way. Negative 1 plus 3 is a... Negative 1 plus 3 is a 2. And if I plug 1 in, 1 cubed plus 3 is a 4. So this is from 2 to 4. So that turns out to be negative 1 over 6 into 1 over 4 minus 1 over 2. So that is negative 1 over 6 times all over 4. And that turns out to be 1 over 24, if I'm not mistaken. So the height is 1 over 24. And that right there would equal the area that we want. Now setting x squared over x cubed plus 3 squared equal to 1 over 24 is a bit challenging, but it is doable. You know, cross multiply and solve the polynomial. They're not asking for that. They're asking for that on the last problems, and we're going to only do one more, and that is pretty much what we need. It says we have cube root of x. Well, cube root of x, and we're running from 0, so 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know what? I am going to make this look nicer. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2. So the graph looks like a radical. There it is. It should be a smoother curve, but you know. So we're pretty much looking at this region.
All right, this is what we want. One, find the average. Well, A, the average is actually the integral from 0 to 8 of x to the 1 third dx. That is x add 1 to the power divided by that. That would be actually, I don't know why I squished that that much. All right, here we go. We have plenty of space. So if I take 3 fourth, let's see how that works. 8 in there, cube root of 8 is 2, that's 16. That divides 4, that is actually 12. And don't forget, I left out some. The average is 1 over 8 minus 0, so you're going to multiply that by 1 eighth, and that's going to turn out to be 3 divided by 3 halves. So that's part A, we're done with that. Part B says, so if you really think about it, this is 1, this is 2, 1 1.5 is about right there. So what they're saying is, the area under, oh, I forgot, I shouldn't use red. Let me use purple. The area of this rectangle equal that green shaded area. Now, they want to know, where does that happen? Well, let's see. They say part B, find C such that F of C equal the average. Well, what's F of C? F of C is actually... cube root of c equal the average well cube root both sides c equals 27 over 8 and c would be what is that uh, 3 324 and 3 fourth 1 2 3 points actually it's right there more 3.75 that's actually where this cross my graph is slightly off so it's more like this all right, and then they say, well, sketch the graph of F in the rectangle. I just did that already, right? And that's how it works. If I find the area of this rectangle, I, I could figure out the area under the integral. And now that I got this down, let me give you the homework. There's the homework. And you do not need to graph number 11. You just need to integrate. And that would be.